Do you want to talk with Tam? 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 Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam, everybody. Today is Tuesday, March the 22nd, and you are tuned into your Talk with Tam YouTube channel. I got to give a shout out to my subscribers. I got to give a shout out to you, my viewers. I got to give a shout out to my face mess community. I got to give a shout out to those empowerment partners and everyone who supports Temple of Praise Ministries mission of empowering individuals and communities. Yay! I pray that you all are having a great week. And it started out with being more than a conqueror. If not, if not, I can promise you this, that after this Talk With Tam interview with Shalonda Thurgill, you will be empowered with the ability to conquer your enemies with forgiveness and love. Amen. 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 Only got one, two organizational announcements. Top junior executives. Booyah. Yes, it is ready. As far as it's been ready, but we're launching it and I'm going to extend, extend the application period to May the 31st. Yay. This is, you can get your information. You can call me and get one of these. I'm going to out to churches. I'm going out to, in the community to pass out these. And again, this is for North St. Louisans. All right. All right. Other thing. Plan D. Plan D. <laughs> Plan D. You can get that at Amazon right now. You need to get your copy. You need to get your copy. Amen. 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 So here we go. One of the biggest, one of the biggest strongholds of the old man. The biggest struggle for Christians is unforgiveness. The inability for Christians to forgive is why I believe, I say I believe, the Bible says we as Christians scarcely be saved. First Peter 4 and 17. For the time has come that judgmental must begin at the house of God. And it first begins at who? Us. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? 18, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? This main point here is about being saved. The main point of being saved is the commitment of obeying the gospel. We can't pick and choose what part of the Bible we want to apply to our lives. The whole Bible is what we will be judged by. I don't believe, I don't believe, I know Christians can forgive if they want to. I do believe that Christians can, can forgive if they want to. If they want to renew their minds, if they want to take off the old man, as my pastor Rainey told me years ago, it is not always easy being a Christian. Which brings us to Tuesday topic. What is it, girl? <laughs> you, can, you can forgive if you want to. That's right. Today, as promised, I have my cousin, 
Shalanda Thurkill with me. Hello, everybody. Whose son, Ahmad, murdered his sister, her daughter, Jamanda Gordon. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we talk with town viewers. We welcome you. Thank you. Uh, we, my talk with town viewers, we pray for you. Thank you. And we talk with town viewers. We love you. Thank you. I love you too. So to start off, just tell our viewers about Jamanda. Oh, Jamanda. Um, Jamanda was my love child. She's the second oldest of my four children, three girls and a boy. And um, she was very outgoing. She was the tomboy. Um, always loved. She loved everybody. Very peace. Peace was everything, you know. She would lift you up, um, go out her way for you, anybody, you know, especially her siblings. Mm -hmm. That's just the type of person that she was. Um, just tell me this about Jamanda. Well, tell the viewers. Tell about her career. <laughs> um, Jamanda is a licensed... Oh, she's going to get me because I always forget. Uh -huh. That's okay. Uh what is it, honey? A licensed therapist. Mm -hmm. And she was in the A plus uh, program. She graduated from Whole High. Okay. And from there, she went to Webster Grove and got her associate's degree. Okay. In um, counseling and therapy. And she went on and got her bachelor's degree. And um, between that time, she had had my grandson, Jaheen, her only child. Um, during that time, she was working a full-time job and being a, a, a first-time mom. And she went on and got her master's. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. So tell us something about Ahmad. Well, Ahmad is my baby. He's 11 years apart from my oldest daughter. He's... Um, Nine years apart from Jamanda, seven years apart from my youngest daughter. Cash. Cash. Mm -hmm. And him being the only boy, uh, he learned how to say three word sentences at nine and a half months. Wow. His first word was not da da, it was Jessica, but he would say yucca, uh -huh. yucca, you know. <laughs> uh, and he was very spoiled. Very mature and advanced for his age. All right. He loved wrestling. Mm -hmm. He was a boy boy. Yeah. I, what The one thing that I always, you know, reminds me when you say Ahmad, even in this, the first thing that comes to my mind is when he was, when he saved. Yes. He saved mm -hmm. uh, someone's life. Yes, he did. At the age of nine. Uh we were, no, he was seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. But we were finishing up our studying at home. He asked me to go outside and play with his ball. I said, yes. About five minutes later, there were some parents that came knocking on my door. I might have soaking wet. I'm about to get, I'm about to get on his head, right? <laughs> and they said, no, 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 no. We just let you, want you to know that your son is a hero. He saved my son's life. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, we live across the street from the lake. And um, at that time, it was a lot there, you know. And there were three brothers, actually four brothers playing. One of the brothers pushed the oldest brother into the lake. Oh. And this boy was three times Ahmad's size. Ahmad did not know how to swim. Ahmad ran down the lot, jumped into the lake. By the time the dad got there, he said he saw Ahmad go down three times. But as Ahmad was going down, he, Ahmad had his arm around the boy's neck. Mm -hmm. And all he saw was Ahmad's head and his little arm swinging as fast as he could. Wow. Yeah. And by the time he got around the deck, but, you know, they were getting ready to go out into the river, mm -hmm. the lake, rather, he snatched him up. He went down three times and came back up. Yes. Yeah. So yes. he did. He saved. He saved um, little boy's life. 
Yes, he did. And he was honored by the Winsfield Police Department at his school. Yes, he was in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. His article was. So before we get into what happened on April the 10th, mm -hmm. 2021, what would you like to say about mental illness? Mental illness is real. Uh, it's very, very real. Um, it's hard to deal with when it's someone, your child, specifically your child, because most parents are in denial don't want to face that their child, there's a possibility there's some behavior issues. Um, but you also have to know the child's history, the father's history, your history, hereditary, things mm -hmm. of that nature. And the first thing about mental illness, especially in the black community, again, is that it's ignored. He's just bad. She's just bad. Or he'll be all right. She'll be all right. All of those type of things. That's not true. When you pay attention to your children, it's best that you go ahead and receive some counseling. And if you don't have the resources in your community, there are programs that you can call um, and they will guide you through that. If you're on Medicaid or something like that, they will help you through that. Navigate you through the system with your child. And I know that that is what you did. I did. And you should be honored for that. <laughs> Thank you. So, <clears throat> for the Talk With Tam viewers to understand the depth of your situation, mm -hmm. tell us what happened from the call to when you got home into your secret closet and reality sets in. Well, actually, um, on the 10th, mm -hmm. April the 10th, yes. it was poor down raining. 2021. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I was just, you know, humming a song, Never Alone, mm -hmm. uh, by Walter Hawkins and family. Mm -hmm. I put my phone in my truck because it was raining real hard. I missed two phone calls, one from my sister and one from... My oldest daughter, Jessica, her boyfriend. And then it was a um, a phone number that I didn't recognize. It was my oldest daughter, Jessica. We have an estranged relationship, so. I understand. I looked at my, test, my text, and I saw Ahmad killed Jamaica. But it meant to say Jamanda. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? Why kill? Is this a joke? You know, that's my initial response mm -hmm. to myself as a joke. So eventually I called that number and Jessica answered the phone. And I said, What's going on? And she was screaming over the phone and said, Am I stabbed? Demanded the death. She did. She did. And I just broke down, started screaming. You know, um, I can remember I was. I stayed on the lot. I, did, I didn't leave from my job. I didn't know who to call, what to do, you know. Um, kept telling myself to think, but then I would just start screaming. I asked her about my grandson. Um, Jaheen. Jaheen. Um, where was Jaheen? And Jessica hung up on me. So now... <laughs> I don't know if my grandson is also dead. So I'm really, I'm just shaking. I think, I try to think, and I couldn't move. I couldn't drive. I couldn't do anything. Thinking of who can I call? Who can I call? I ended up calling my daughter Cash, my young daughter. She had just come home um, at the top of January 21st. or well, 2021, mm -hmm. January. And I called her and I let her know. And she remained calm and things like that. And I got off the phone with her and continued to sit there. All I can say is that God gave me the strength to drive off that driveway onto the highway. But as I'm on the highway, I can hear, I heard Amanda's voice in my right ear. 
And she said, Mama, I'm good. And I started hitting the steering wheel, screaming. And I almost flipped the truck over. So what would usually take me 30, 35 minutes from my job to get to her house, it's, I don't know. It just looked like everything was moving in slow motion. So you get there. And you get there. What, how are you feeling? What, not how you're feeling, but how are you approaching this? I'm, I'm in shock. You know, I'm in shock. Um, as I get off the highway, I go onto a street, it's a one-way street. I see the, the ambulance, the cops, cars, the, just people everywhere. Um, I had nowhere to park, so I parked you know, beginning of the street. The end. Yeah, me. Mm -hmm. Um I just remember getting out the truck. I put my hoodie on because I had on a jacket. It was still raining. And the first person I saw was our little cousin Trinice. And she gave me a hug. Um, the second person I saw was her sister, Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. And she was standing there with this frown on her face, looking at me. And I'm like, why is she looking at me like that? So as I got closer to her, she turned her back towards me and wouldn't move because she was standing beside another female. And when I walked past her, I bumped her because I'm like, how dare you? You know, I don't know what's going on. All I know is that my daughter is dead. My grandson could possibly be dead too. So as I get closer, it's a big crowd. A lot of people are sitting in the car and I think you were in the car at that time because I didn't see you till afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, I get up there and Jamanda's dad is there and they're telling the officers, the detective, that that's the mom. And um, all I'm doing is just trying to see my baby. I just want to see my baby. I'm in shock, but I'm calm. I remember me just being calm. But I'm paying attention to everything around me. Everybody around me. Um, and eventually standing there, I asked for my dog, Heidi, first. <laughs> <laughs> we love Heidi, y'all. I talk about Heidi all the time. Well, that's because Amanda took mm -hmm. Heidi home with her because Jaheen actually was a baby, grew up with Heidi. Yeah. <laughs> and I was scared to ask for Jaheen. I understand. So, I asked the officer, um, Heidi. I said, where's Heidi? And he said, well, who is Heidi, ma'am? <laughs> I said, well, that's my family dog. <laughs> <laughs> we love Heidi. <laughs> and, Cousin Heidi. So, he asked the lady officer, um, was there a dog or something <laughs> like that in there? And uh, so, they, you know, whatever. And um, then I was getting ready. I went under the tape because I, I wanted to see my baby. And unfortunately, um, it was a black lady officer that walked up to me and said, uh, ma'am, you're going to have to step behind the yellow, you know, tape. And it was like real disrespectful to me. And before you know it, I put my finger up. And I told her, don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me like that, you know. And I turned my attention back to the male officer and I asked him, I just said it out loud, where's Jaheen? And I don't know, some, there were some people around who said he's in the, the neighbor's house. Thank God. And thank God that the neighbors allowed the family to, they yes. opened their doors to the family in. I ran up the steps and I, when I went into the house, um, 
my sister, my older sister, Sherry, was sitting on the couch. And Jaheem was sitting over to the right with his dad, Josh. And I'm just like, I'm hysterical, and I'm, but I'm happy that he's okay. And he's just sitting there, and he's smiling. He said, Gigi, my mama dead. This is a three-year-old baby. Gigi, my mama dead. And I'm just, what? You know, just, and I'm grabbing him and I'm holding, I'm holding Josh and just holding them all together, everything. And I saw the look on Jaheem's face and he like looking at me like, why is she screaming? And, you mm. know, and um, <laughs> he said, Gigi, Uncle Ma killed my mom. And he said, Gigi, because that's his name for me, it's Gigi. He said, Gigi, I'm coming to your house tonight. I said, okay. Because that's the relationship that he and I had. You know, his mom, if I be at work, he'll tell his mama, call my Gigi. I'm, <laughs> I'm packing my bag. I'm going to my Gigi house. Uh, and after that, I sat down and I was just, honestly, I was just in and out. And I would snap back, go back, snap mm -hmm. back. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm going to kill him. Where he at? Because I initially wanted to kill my son. I knew, knowing me, that had I seen my son, I'd kill him. And I just began to wail and scream and scream. And my older sister, Sherry, we're not close, but um, she just grabbed me and just held me tight. Told me that I had to be strong for my grandson. And we have to be strong. For your grandson. And um, I appreciated that. Because at that moment. I needed my big sister. Amen. And she was there. Um, and I think my aunt Sweet came in. Sat beside me. And I was just. And then. The detectives came in. Asked me questions about a mom. And I let them know that he has a history of um, psychosis, um, schizophrenia, and bipolar. And I did give them the like St. Louis Police Department because they all interacted with the mom. Um, and at that time, me talking with the detective, my oldest daughter, Jessica, walked in the door and told Josh to come in. And that's when all the, excuse me, I know this is a Christian family thing, and that, but that's when all the bullshit came about. And I knew, like I said, I was paying attention to everything. God allowed me to pay attention to every move everybody was making. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to get off into that anything. After a while, after I got to answer the questions, of the, I went outside and uh, I walked because I was just, I don't know. I was angry because of what my oldest daughter, what I just saw, witnessed her do. Yes. Um, and I was just out of it. So I walked, put my hood back on and I walked towards my truck. And that's when I saw my cousin Mia. <laughs> and um, we got in my truck and I just started hitting my head and and you stay calm. You said, stop that. <laughs> stop that. And I was asking why, why, why? And you said something as to uh, do you really want to know why? God, I'll show you why. Will you be able to accept it or deal with it something of that nature but you sat there with me we laughed we cried and uh i yeah sat there for a good while i missed out the them you know taking demanda putting her in the bag and looking back on that ret retrospective I'm glad that I didn't see her in the bag. Uh, 
because just the month prior, we spent our bir her birthday together um, on a road trip. March the 15th. Mm -hmm. We left March 12th, went to Nashville, meet her and Jaheen. Mm -hmm. That's what she wanted for her birthday. So, yeah. So you, you're, you're, and I know this part is that you went back in the house and, you know, things happened about, you know, with Jaheen and things like that. Yes. But on your way home, on my way home, I, 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 like I said, I was in shock and I was like, my demand is gone. No. Ahmad. Why? What? My babies. They're gone. This is my life. This is real. It's not even a lifetime movie. It's not. This is real life. This just happened. And then it, I'm like, I lost both of my kids, one to the grave, one to the penitentiary. And I was just like, Lord, why? I just, I cried, I cried, I screamed, and that was my ride home. And let me say this, my cousin lives in Lake St. Louis. So that was a long drive home. Now, I want to know this, and we're going to end this segment and give her a break. But when you got home, and you was by yourself, what did you tell God? <laughs> I want to know again. Um, we want it real. I told God <laughs> that I will fuck all them bitches. I wasn't expecting her to say that. I was expecting for her to use her biblical words. Well, but go asked, on, go on. You asked me what did I tell God. <laughs> yeah, you told him the truth. <laughs> and, um, for y'all out there and uh, talk with talk Tam, with Tam Land. Land. <laughs> I'm one of God's very special, special cheer. <laughs> and uh, he made me. Yes, he did. And uh, yeah, because of what transpired and how I was treated by my own child. And these are church people and you know, born again, Christian, sanctified folk. And you standing, I mean, and my oldest daughter, standing in front of my dead daughter's house, your sister, that I had a real loving relationship with. Telling the folk that how I'm not going to get, take my grandson with me. I think the thing stopped. 